All right, so now we're talking about the Trans Am. Finally, I got my light over here so you can see. So we got everything back from powder. As you can see, we have the anti-roll bar here. We have the panhard bar underneath. Rear end got all coated. If I jump around here, you can see torque arm is all coated and the transmission mount is all coated. So that's all well and pretty. We swapped out the bill of specialty wheels that were on here for the wheels that are going to be staying on it and the Hoosier slicks. So this now is at ride height. Again, cars leveled front, back, side, side. And that is where we got another gift from our friends over at Spone Performance. So these guys are the guys who made the original torque arm and transmission mount that didn't even come close to fitting in this car. And now they gifted us with this. So as I said, the car is level front, back, side to side, but you can see here the motor isn't. It's on a five degree angle downward to the passenger side, which equates to almost an inch at the motor mount bolt right here. So, we took a lot of time, jacked the motor up, pulled the mounts off, made sure that they were on the right side, they weren't upside down like this, everything, and uh, yeah, that's just the way that Spone made it. So, unfortunately for us, we gotta redo it. There's no other choice. I will not let this car get out of here with the engine sitting an inch over to the passenger side. Uh, client doesn't want it either, but it's just another kick in the nuts from these guys. I mean, he, this client spent a lot of money. He obviously bought everything for this car from them, and so far nothing's fit. I was talking to him about the K-frame itself. They had to put a huge piece of roll cage tubing and like, you know, pry that thing over and try to do whatever to get the bolts to line up. So it wasn't even like that thing went in well. At this point, we're almost redoing everything that he bought and the stuff that he bought is going in the trash because we can't sell it in good faith knowing that it doesn't fit or it doesn't work on a car. So what we need to do, I'll take you in here, I can show you, is this black mount right here. There's four bolts, you can see one, two there. Um, four bolts that go through into the red K-frame and then these two little legs that come up to go to the silver motor mount here. So what we need to do is now that the car's leveled front, back, side to side, we can go ahead, pull these bolts out of here and we can make our own black piece in the middle to connect the motor down to the K-frame. Now that's obviously gonna take a bit more time and what we were trying to do is why this stand is here and I'm trying not to hit it, is the front of this car is gutted so it doesn't have the factory crash stuff in the front anymore it doesn't have the upper core support that used to go up here it doesn't have the lower core support that used to go down there so what we need to do is make all that out of tubing we're going to do a um a one and a quarter inch tube which is what we use on the tr uh, torque arm we're going to come down like this we're going to come over all the way over to this frame rail and back up and then off of that, we're gonna do a little halo in the front, a little halo in the back, and the rat will hang behind it. The intercooler will hang in front of that uh, one and a quarter inch main hoop there. And then we're going to go and go from this point here, down to the front, around here, back up this guy, and over back to this side. All out of three quarters. So we got a little bit of tubing work to do so we can mount the rad, the intercooler, the trans cooler, all that kind of stuff. But now we also have to do the motor stuff. And uh, yeah, thanks, Spone. Uh, you guys rock. Not. So here we are, and that's what we're going to be working on tonight now. Like I said, the truck is sitting level front, back, side to side, exactly how we need it to get ready to cut. Problem is I'm out here by myself tonight and I am not cutting that, risking it falling, uh, the rear end part of the frame falling down and getting me, whatever. So we're gonna wait, um, I think till tomorrow night, I got a hand coming tomorrow night and we'll cut it and get it all where we need it to be. So we're gonna put away some tools. We're gonna jump on this, like I said, and uh, let's do it. All right, so I let you guys skip cleaning up tonight. Usually I do the time lapse of it, but I... I don't know, I figure you kind of get it by now. Anyways, so here we are back underneath this thing. So you can see here we have the one plate. I need to add the same plate right here so that we can connect this anti-roll bar up to there. 
So we are going to clean the frame, grind the frame, weld that plate on. So it looks like this. We're gonna weld the arm in. So the arms are done back here. And then the only thing left that we need to do is box in this bracket right here. And Dynamic is going to make our plate for that. I already have it done all in cardboard. I don't know, it's somewhere here. Anyways, I have it done all in cardboard, so I'll go and I'll do the cat on that, send it to him, hopefully tomorrow we can get it back. We'll weld that in, and then the rear end of this thing is totally done, at least on my end. Then we're gonna jump back over to the front. We're going to lift the motor, get the motor figured out so that I can send those plates over to Dynamic at the same time, um, and we'll get all that stuff cut. And then lastly, we're gonna start the tube on the front end. So. That's the plan for tonight. Finish up the back, get the motor mounts off, get them sorted out in uh, cardboard so we can do it in CAD. And then lastly, if we have any time left, we are going to start bending some tubing for that front end. But let's not get too far ahead of ourselves. Let's get back here and get going. We are and there you go we got this sucker boxed in here um, I didn't go through the trouble of going over to see dynamic I had a couple little plates so I just cut them and welded them in uh, we got our link bars in here we got our plate welded right there we got our tab welded to that and then on this side what I did was I cheated a bit you can see there's a little bit of an angle here so what I did was kind of offset this bracket outside the frame and then I put a little plate up here in an L, and then one in the middle as like a stiffening rib, if I get out of the way there. There you go, you can see. So, that's what I did. Um, I do not think that we're gonna have an issue that pushes on the bottom and the side of the frame, and like I said, it's got an eighth of an inch uh, little bracket with a gusset in it. Should be fine. So, that's it for the rear end of this thing. We are done, we are now moving up to the front, and what we're gonna do up there is I think we're gonna bend a couple pieces of tube, hopefully that inch and a quarter for sure, and get that mounted. Like I said, that's gonna be like a main hoop back here. The intercooler sit in front, rad behind. And uh, hopefully with that in place, we will be able to get some of this stuff in the front wrapped up, and then I'll go back to do the motor mounts. I'm not feeling the motor mounts tonight, kinda wanna bend some tube. So, let's get to it. Now that we've done the back, like I mentioned, we're gonna move up here to the front. So, we were here the other night and kind of put this in place loosely, so I put two pieces of tape on that stand. That's why I didn't wanna kick it. Now we know that this bottom shroud needs to go up flat, and that tube is gonna go out above it. So what I did was locate the height of that stand right there, um, so that when this goes up flat, we are just barely above it as that tube's gonna come underneath and back around. Now, we also know that at the bottom height of that intercooler right now, we can mount the rad at the same height and we'll be well below the hood. So best case scenario, we can put a taller rad in the car, um, but at least we know that the one that's here will fit no matter what. So as you can see, this is behind the factory frame rail right there, about an inch and a half to two inches. And then what I wanna do, like I mentioned, was run a one and a quarter inch tube here. It'll bend just underneath, and then we'll come off of it to grab that mount and this mount here. So what we need to do is go grab our little cheater stick, and we'll put that up there. That'll tell us how much material we need, and we can start bending. Okay, so same thing you've seen me do a million times before. It's this scrap piece of the inch and a quarter. And right here, about three inches down, I have my black mark where the die would start. So what we wanna do is place that up here on the frame rail. And it looks like we're gonna have to cut this down. As I wanna get this thing kinda tucked up somewhere like this. So if we go let's say the top of the frame rail. 
All right, yeah, I'll buy that. Okay, so we know roughly that we're gonna lose this three inches, but I can't lose that until after I bend it. We have to bend it and then cut that off since that's how much I need to grab to, in the bender to start that bend process. So what we're gonna do is measure this guy. We'll measure across, we'll measure up. We'll cut a piece just a little bit longer and start bending. So we got that bent up and uh, it went pretty good, I guess. You can see here, um, I just lined it up by eye, but there's, I don't know, less than a sixteenth of an inch probably between flatness this way. So we know that the intercooler hangs from the bottom of the frame rail down is six inches. So what I want to do is if this is the corner of the intercooler like this, I want to rest this tube up like that, and then we're going to put the corner of the radiator back here. But I want this tube higher so that these can kind of sink inside. So if I know that that point from here, the bottom to there is six inches, I want to make this guy about five. So I guess what we could do is split that. We'll make it five and a half that'll put us just a half an inch down into this tube which is almost center line so what we want to do now is I just lined it up square with the edge of my table and what we're going to do is measure off the end of the table five and a half inches and we'll make our mark and then five and a half inches down here we'll make our mark and we can cut those off and then this should fit up in the car So yet another night draws to a close. It's about 2.30 in the morning right now. I'm gonna be up about 6, 6.30. So it's time to get in and, you know, pick up that couple hours sleep. Now, we did get this thing wrapped up. As you can see, I welded a plate. Oh, let's see if you can see it there. Welded a plate on the frame rail so we can reinforce that a little bit. And we got our tube right across over to this side. So now what we want to do is I want to come off of that tube there with a bracket to that guy and a bracket over to that guy there. And that's going to mount the intercooler on the bottom. If we climb up to the top, you can see we are not too far below this lip right here. And that's perfect because what we want to do is run a three quarter tube around this shape here and we're gonna come off of it this way and off of it that way and grab that top. So I think it's gonna work out kind of the way that we want it to. And uh, yeah, that's it. So I'd like to thank you for getting this far in the video. And uh, you know, a little bit done on the truck, a little bit done on this thing tonight. So it was a good idea to come out and uh, spend some time on them. Now, I would like to say thank you to Comet Machine. Comet Machine is a local machine shop here. Here's their banner that does all kinds of little stuff for us. They do machining of flywheels and uh, connecting rods and all that kind of stuff. But we did not have a custom bump stop kit or bump steer kit, I should say, for this. It's got a Mustang II rack in it and it comes with these strange drop spindles. So what we needed was an adapter to go from the Mustang 2 inner tie rod to a Heim joint on the outside. Yes, I know I'm, I need spacers in here still, but he machined up these nice aluminum bump steers for us. And you know, they're fully adjustable. He did all the wrench flats on them and everything. So this is as good a quality as you're gonna find out there. He is going to be cutting down those rear control arms for us and making some spacers for us, but hey, Thank you, Chris, over at Comet. We couldn't do this stuff without you. Now, 
all that said, come on back tomorrow. For me, it'll be Friday for you guys and we'll get some more done. Hopefully we can get the intercooler mounted, the rad mounted, and we're gonna get this thing shortened up. So that should be next video. Appreciate you guys getting this far. And uh, hey, I'm going in to go to bed. So get out there, get in your shop, and always do stuff.